Let's talk about failure. Or rather, let's talk about the fear of failure and what it does to you. So I'm an engineer, but when it comes to hacking and making stuff with technology, I always felt like a total hoax, like I had zero practical skills. And uh, the question becomes, um, well, I studied two and a half years of math without getting to apply it on anything, so, so what do you expect? But the question becomes, what happens to someone when they go through that kind of process? Well, either you become too afraid to apply what you've learned, or you simply forget it. In my case, both those things happened, which is why I decided to start Kids Hack Day together with this amazing team of people that you see in this picture. Because for us, being able to cope with failure is actually a prerequisite for being creative. And learning how to program is just the perfect tool for facilitating that process. And prototyping future learning, which is the title of this talk, um, is much more than just teaching kids about programming. It's about using technology to its fullest potential, using it as a tool for creative expression, because that's what it is. And ultimately, that's what we've always used it for. We humans are tool builders. We build tools to extend our bodies and our minds and to express our creativity. Programming and the ability to communicate with machines just happens to be the most mind-blowing and empowering tool there is. Yet we don't teach it in Swedish schools, where I'm from. So just to give you a few, uh, few numbers, uh, during the spring of 2012, only 27 science and technology teachers graduated for high school, where only seven of those were eligible for the subject technology, while six out of 10 are considering leaving the profession while even before that, there is a lack of over 2,000 teachers for high school. So because kids are inherently creative, um, not giving them access to this tool is not only unethical, it actually hampers progress itself and our ability to move forward as a species. Now, Having already taken place in over five different continents over the period of six months, our goal with Kids Hack Day is to give every kid the ability to explore technology in a hands-on manner. Now, what's interesting is not exactly what we've done so far, but how we've gotten to the point where we are today and how this movement was formed. But to be able to tell you that, I have to backtrack a little bit and tell you a story. So it all began dark, Swedish, cold December night of 2012. At this time, I was running around with this black box that lit up when you touched it. I called it hackerspace in a box, and it really seemed to spark people's curiosity, which in turn made me very curious as to why people were so engaged by this little device. So naturally, uh, I kept harassing people with this box. I always had it in my backpack. I brought it and tried it out in a lot of different contexts. I brought it to conferences. I played around in workshops with teachers and principals, uh, built like a blinking piano in the staircase of our office space. And I even made this uh, art project called uh, Why So Curious, which was based on a similar kind of concept. And what I found out by doing all these things is that actually anyone can become interested in technology if you just make it engaging and accessible enough. In this case, using just a piece of cardboard, some conductive ink, some simplified circuits, some things that lights up, and some bananas, which always tends to, to work with people. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so if anyone can become interested in technology, then it should have only been natural for me to become interested at an earlier age. But traditional educa education happened to lead me down a very different path, a path that was numbing my curiosity and gradually killing my creative desires. I was graduating as an industrial engineer. 
designated to work as a management consultant, crunching numbers for the big corporation. And it didn't take that long, although I did, did finish my degree, for me to realize that this was not something, it didn't feel, it was not something for me, it just didn't feel right. So as, I'll, so in a kind of a act of desperation, I decided to divert from this path and do something completely different. Because as Albert Einstein so famously put it, he who can no longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe is as good as dead. And I definitely didn't want to become just another corporate zombie working for some big company. So that's when I discovered TED. Yes. Um, and TEDx. You see, I'm a firm believer in hands-on education and learning by doing. But here I was studying something that's the complete opposite of that. So I realized that if I was ever going to make a true impact on society, I would have to connect with like-minded people who share these values, people who still have that creative spark and that curiosity to try new things, even if it was not always going to be so comfortable. Um, so being involved in TEDx and meeting all these amazing people um, finally led me to meet my future partners. I'm there in the middle. Uh, you see, working with kids is incredibly rewarding because before they're fully educated, kids have this amazing ability. Can you guess what it is? Well, they're not afraid to fail, uh, and they will try anything. And I, if anyone, uh, I was terrified of failure. I was terrified of trying new things. So I was like, kind of saw my chance to, to hack myself and get, and get rid of this fear. So I started to do this, these, um, these experiments with kids. And what I found out was that if you, um, if you give kids uh, these... Like, if you give kids the ability to build something out of nothing that blinks and makes noises and is really engaging and intriguing before they have a clue as to how this thing actually works, but they're exposed to the technology behind it, they will be more motivated to find out the answer themselves than if you just give away the answer in a book for them to memorize. They will gain practical skills and confidence which should only be complemented with theory rather than the other way around. You see, companies today are hiring you for your skills rather than your knowledge. So, I mean, can you really speak that language? Or did you just study it for six years, you know, and never got to practice it? And so, if the purpose of education is to give kids skills for real life, then for me, it only makes sense that the purpose of education or that education should be about acquiring skills rather than knowledge. And so, because we're also in the middle of an academic inflation where suddenly a degree is not worth anything anymore. I mean, I, had a, I have a lot of friends that graduated and are you know, unemployed and have a hard time getting a, getting a job. So um, whether you acquire these skills from established institutions or not is no longer that relevant, actually, especially since we don't even teach programming in Swedish schools. So if you really care about the future, you should also care about future learning because it is essential to tackle the challenges we are facing with a generation that's feeling increasingly disengaged in the world simply because they lack the tools for meaningful engagement. We are educating a generation into a world where technology is affecting our lives in more and more profound ways, yet we don't teach our kids how to understand this technology and how to interact with it. For me, this makes no sense, and it, we need, which is why we need to change it now. So I invite you on this quest and together we can create a spark for change and we can all prototype our future together.
because it's not about attacking the school system. It's about leaving it behind. Thank you.